guys, it's Katie here with Life in the Mundane, and I'm excited to come to you today to talk about quiet times. What to do when your kids are too old for a nap, but mom still needs a break. So we're going to talk about how to set that up, why it's important to still have quiet times, and suggestions for things your kids can do, and how to make it just an easier transition for your family. So let's get started. So first, what is quiet time? Quiet time is simply what it sounds like. It is when your kids are too old for a nap, you're used to you know, a certain period of time and usually in the afternoons where your kids are being quiet, they're usually sleeping, and you can kind of get things done. So when they get too old for that nap, and I would, sometimes they still need that nap for sure, but when they get old too for that nap time, we like to transition them to quiet time. So, um, yeah, so part of the reason why it's important is one, they still need rest. Even if they don't want to sleep, they need rest. Two, homeschooling especially, but even without homeschooling, um, with homeschooling especially, we have a lot of togetherness time. And it is wonderful, and it's one of the pros of homeschooling, one of the reasons why I love it so much. But there's also time and place for some space and separation. It helps sort of relieve some of the tension. Um, in the family, especially between siblings, to have quiet time. So um, it's also great, like I said, it is good for mom to be able to get a nap, maybe get some cleaning done, read, work on some other projects, whatnot, um, do lesson planning, look at lessons for the next day. So many benefits for mom, but definitely benefits for kids too. Just, it really helps recharge them. It helps kind of calm them. I love to do quiet time. I don't always do it at the exact same time, but I love to do quiet time about an hour before dinner. So I get to kind of cook dinner um, in peace and quiet, but it calms them down right before daddy gets home from work and um, It just makes the whole evening go a little bit smoother and they're recharged and ready to go So, so you want to start quiet time in your house and you're just not quite sure how to do that So let me give you a few tips and tricks that we have tried um, There are definitely many ways you can do it and it can look different The big thing I would say is make sure you have clear set parameters um, whatever your expectations are for quiet time, make sure that you communicate those really clearly to your kids. When we started doing quiet time, we really did a poor job of that, and that's one thing I regret. Um, sometimes during quiet time, I would allow them to talk as long as they kept it quiet. Sometimes I would require complete silence, but they could read a book or they could whatever. Sometimes I had rules where they had to stay in their beds and other times where they could play as long as they stayed in the room. And it made it really hard for them to obey um, and very frustrating for me because I was expecting different things different times. And I would usually communicate that expectation um, to them before they go down, but it was changing from day to day and we were calling it the same thing and it was really confusing. So definitely have clear cut expectations for your kids. So some of the expectations that we have that we've laid out for our kids, um, if this kind of helps give you a point of reference, but feel free to tweak it, is that you have to stay in your room. You have to be doing something quiet. So your choices are a quiet toy, um, a listening uh, to an audiobook or music. Uh, my kids love to listen to Adventures in Odyssey during this time, um, and uh, or some of the other audio dramas. Uh, they can be uh, sketching. My children love, if you know anything about my family, you know that my children love to sketch or always drawing, super creative, and they got that from their dad, not from me. <laughs> and they, um, they can do any kind of quiet activity like that. So sometimes they'll play with a stuffed animal or a doll. Legos are a great thing for quiet time, but there can't be really any talking. So it is, it is just a time for quiet. And I think one of the things that this has, um, has given my kids is a sense of creativity. Um, it's helped them fight the boredom and learn creative ways to entertain themselves quietly and just to be able to be alone. Like learning to be alone is a, is a big skill that a lot of adults don't even have. So I think it's a really sweet time. Um, along with setting expectations, I will say I think a timer is really helpful. So we have these timers that we got this year for school and I have one for each kid and it has their color duct tape on the top and these have been a lifesaver for so many things but one of the things that we use them for is quiet time. So now I set a set time so it's usually 60 minutes so they'll have a one hour quiet time where they can't come out of the rooms and they have to stay quiet. What this does is it keeps me really consistent with their expectations. They can visually see exactly how much time they have left as it counts down. 
and it helps me with um, when there is a discipline issue it makes it really clear-cut they know that if they come out of that room outside of having to go they get one time they get to come out and go to the bathroom if I forgot to have them I usually try to make sure they go to the bathroom before they go in um, but if they don't I let them go to the bathroom one time during quiet time um, but if they continue to come out or if there's a lot of bickering and fighting or not following the rules then I will add time. I'll add a minute or two or five depending on the infraction and um, they know that they'll have time added. It makes it clear cut. They know exactly what I expect of them and what the consequences will be if they disobey and honestly since we started the system I've only had to add time like once. It is so simple because they know exactly when it's going in and they've started to really enjoy quiet time. They'll even save activities for quiet time and say oh I'm gonna work on you know, creating my latest comic book or learning to write in code, in secret code. Um, my daughters like to save certain sketches or coloring books for that time. So, um, so anyways, it's a really sweet time and I recommend it all the way from tots when they start giving up naps all the way to teens. We all need our quiet time, including mom. And I try to spend that time being both busy doing household things, but also just some downtime to be able to read, to refresh, to, um, to help my attitude improve and um, so that when they come out we're all better for it. One other thing that I will note guys is that I've also started instilling a shorter quiet time right before bed. So a lot of times going straight from the busyness of the day straight to bed is really hard transition for my kids in particular, maybe it's just mine, but they have a hard time doing that transition and so one of the things that I like to do is to send them to bed for a quiet time before their actual bedtime. So this can be anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes usually and they kind of have those quiet time activities where they can unwind, they can play a little bit in their bed and then I come in and tell them it's lights out or I'll set the timer so that they know when that's up and then it's made the transition to bed a lot easier I was just by giving them that outlet to be able to kind of wind down for the night. Um, I know for me and my husband we like to put on a, a TV show or something like that to wind down so it's sort of the same concept. Um, it gives them that chance to sort of relax and slow down a little before having to stop completely. So. so I would love to know if you guys do quiet time too, if you do some version of it, if you call it something else. Um, there are so many different ways that you can do it. Some people do it on a blanket um, or you know, even out in the family living areas. They separate all the kids, whatever it is. I'd love to hear what you guys do. Drop that in the comments. And if this video has been helpful to you, please share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, and find us on Facebook and Instagram at Life in the Mundane. And um, I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday uh, just talking about making the most of the little moments in areas like parenting, homeschooling, and home management. And I hope you enjoy checking out my channel. Thanks and talk to you later. Bye.